Welcome to the Center for Digital Learning, Manipal College of Pharmaceutical Sciences, an initiative funded by Vision Group on Science and Technology, Government of Karnataka, and supported by Manipal Academy of Higher Education, Manipal. I am Dr. Anup Kishore at the Department of Pharmacology. In the previous lecture, we were discussing about doses. We have seen that dose is a measure of quantity of a substance and could be expressed in terms of weight, volume or number. In this lecture, we will look at a few other forms of doses. Another way of expressing a measured quantity of a substance is in terms of units or international units. This is generally employed for fat soluble vitamins like vitamin A, vitamin D and E for hormones like insulin, gonadotropins, etc. For enzymes like urokinase, streptokinase, etc. For immunoglobulins like tetanus immune globulin, anti rabies immune globulin, hepatitis immune globulin, etc. and certain endotoxins. Expressing the dose of drugs in international units does not tell us anything about the weight or volume or number of molecules of the drug. Instead, the international units is a way to quantify the biological effect of the medication. Let me explain this with the help of an example, the hormone insulin. As you all know, insulin is a protein whose deficiency results in increased blood sugar levels and diabetes. Therefore, Insulin can be injected as a drug for replacement therapy to control the conditions. For the replacement therapy, insulin isolated and purified from pigs, cows and synthetically obtained from yeast and bacteria using recombinant DNA technology are used. These different insulins called as insulin analogues have different chemical structure and therefore have varying amount of biological activity, which means they all reduce blood glucose levels, but the intensity of the effect is different for each preparation. So, how do you decide the dose of insulin when you have multiple preparations with varying effect? You cannot weigh the preparations and quantify them in milligrams or micrograms, because one microgram of different insulin analogues produce different effects. One way to solve this problem is by quantifying the biological activity of insulin. One international unit of insulin is the amount of insulin required to reduce the concentration of blood glucose in a fasting rabbit by 2.5 millimoles per liter or 45 milligrams per deciliter. So, no matter what the source of insulin is or what its chemical structure is, one international unit of any insulin preparation is a standardized quantity that reduces blood glucose levels by a specific amount. In humans, administration of one unit of insulin decreases the blood glucose level by approximately 50 milligrams per deciliter. Now, it is known that approximately 34.7 micrograms of pure crystalline human insulin is equivalent to one international unit. All insulin preparations come dissolved or suspended in liquids. The commonly available strengths are U100 which means 100 units per ml, U40 which means 40 units of insulin per ml and U500. So, whenever you come across the term international unit to express drug dose, you should remember that the unit is related to biological activity of the drug and not its quantity. Apart from international units, we do have a few dose units which are specific to certain category of compounds like enzymes. The activity of enzymes is quantified in terms of their ability to catalyze certain reactions. For example, 
Christensen unit or Cu. The Cu is used to quantify the activity of fibrinolytics like streptokinase and plasminogen. One Cu of the fibrinolytic enzyme is the quantity of the enzyme required to lyse the fibrin clot from 1 ml of 0.2 percent bovine fibrinogen in 30 minutes. Interestingly, Christensen unit can also be used to quantify coagulases that promote formation of fibrin clot. Here is a fibrinolytic preparation containing streptokinase that is used to lyse fibrin clot and this one is a coagulase preparation with opposing action containing batroxobin that promotes hemocoagulation and both are quantified in Christensen unit. Other similar dose units include amylase units, lactase units, lipase units, fungal protease units, pancreatin amylase units, catalase units, flavozyme units and a lot more. There is yet another dose, the radiation dose. This is used in radiation therapy. Here radiation dose refers to the energy deposited by ionizing radiation per unit mass of the tissue. It is calculated as joules of energy absorbed per kilogram of tissue. The different units to express the absorbed dose are gray, rad, millisievert, etc. Please remember that this is not an absolute measure of quantity of a substance. We are not measuring the energy of the radiation, but the energy absorbed by the tissue is taken into consideration and the absorbed dose varies with the wavelength of electromagnetic radiation used and its energy, the time of exposure and many other factors. Therefore, radiation dose is different from the conventional doses which I have explained just now. So, let us not include radiation dose with other doses for now. To sum up all this, the term dose is used when you have only one substance like sodium chloride, paracetamol, glucose, insulin etcetera and a measured quantity of which is administered in milligrams, milliliters or units. We use the term concentration when we have a mixture like a solution obtained by dissolving a solute in a solvent. In concentration, we express the proportion of the components present in a given quantity of mixture. We will see more about concentration in the next video. If you like the video, kindly subscribe to our channel. Even more educational content are in the making. If you have any queries or comments, write to us at digital.learning at manipal.edu or post in the comment section below. Thank you.